Plotkin is a depth psychologist, wilderness guide, and an agent of cultural evolution. He's also the author of Soulcraft, Nature and the Human Soul, and most recently, Wild Mind, which he talks about in this short interview that was conducted at his Animus Valley Institute in Durango, Colorado. We hope that you'll enjoy the interview and the book. So Bill, what does it mean to have a wild mind? Well, it means to have a, a whole mind. It means to be able to embody all of the, the facets of our natural human psyche. So sometimes I, I think of um, something the Zen poet Gary Snyder said. He said, to speak of wildness is to speak of wholeness. We humans come from that wholeness. So he's reminding us, and I'm reminding us in this book, that uh, we humans are part of human nature, a part of nature. We are the human part of nature. And uh, our minds, like wild nature more generally, are multifaceted diverse, complex. That's part of what wild means. Uh, it means self-organizing, has many different parts. Uh, the parts are complexly related to each other, and everything that we need to be fully human has been provided us by nature. So a wild mind is a mind uh, that uh, has ready access to all of its multifaceted uh, capacities. And in the contemporary Western world, we've uh, minimized, we've taken a very small s slice of the pie of our possibilities and put our emphasis there in, in, in the way in which we're human. But our capacities, our possibilities of being fully human are much, much wider and wilder than what most people uh, develop or cultivate in the Western world. So this book, Wild Mind, is a celebration of the multifaceted, uh, unpredictable, uh, extraordinary qualities that we're born with as human beings. And it's a book about how to cultivate those wild facets of our human psyche. And what are the four facets of the self? Well, what I've done is I've mapped the four facets of the self, or the four facets of our original human wholeness, onto the four cardinal directions. This is the, the same map that we find in cultures all over the world uh, to map wholeness, wholeness of anything, including of ourselves. And it turns out that the four cardinal directions is essentially the same map as given to us by the four seasons qualities of the four seasons, and also the four times of day. So that uh, it's dawn, noon, dusk, and midnight. So any of these three maps, the times of day, the seasons, or the four cardinal directions, give us uh, the same sort of template for uh, nature's wholeness. So um, when it comes to the, the self or our human wholeness, um, there's a north, south, east and west facet of our wholeness. And that's the primary uh, topic of the book. So I'm going to nevertheless attempt to give you a very brief summary of these four facets. The um, north facet I call the nurturing generative adult. And this is our capacity for true mature leadership and for healing and uh, for building things, creating things. Uh, for um, serving our people, but also the um, greater Earth community that we're a part of. So um, we're born as humans to be what we could call ecocentric, which means nature-centered. And we, uh, when we grow into our uh, full nurturing generative adult, we experience ourselves first and foremost as members of the greater earth community and not first and foremost as a member of um, a nation or a religion or uh, a human village or even a family. That we experience ourselves as a member of the greater earth community and we are serving uh, all the, the um, members and components of that community through the way we live our lives. 
So that's the north facet. The south facet is what I call our wild indigenous one. Um, and this facet has been somewhat suppressed by Western culture. It's the part of ourselves which uh, loves emotions, loves being embodied as a human animal, experiences a natural kinship with all the other um, species, and feels at home in whatever habitats we live in, um, and um, is instinctive, uh, sexual, and erotic in, in a natural way, and as I say, just um, loves being embodied and uh, feels uh, our natural indigenous relationship with everything. Um, and this is as essential as any of the other facets, our wild indigenous one. So then moving uh, to the east, the um, east facet is the one I call the innocent sage. Now there's a slash between innocent and sage because um, this uh, facet of our wholeness, the east facet, is equally innocent and wise. It's, it's both. And uh, it has a pure, uh, clear sensing capacity. It, it, it experiences the world simply and in the light and in the big picture of the world. Um, so it's, and it loves paradox, just like its name, Innocent Sage. We often think that innocence is the opposite of wisdom, but actually they're very much related kind of a paradoxical way. And sometime the innocent, sometimes the innocent sage appears as a fool, a sacred fool is another archetype for the East. Uh, the fool that doesn't really care about the norms and rules of everyday society, is not against it, but isn't for it, is just its natural self. And another archetype that is um, resonant with the innocent sage is the trickster. Uh, the part of ourselves that laughs at our uh, extraordinary, weird uh, human nature and uh, can uh, doesn't take ourselves so seriously and can uh, lighten up. So that's the East, the innocent sage. And in the West is um, the facet of our wholeness that I call the Muse Beloved. That's a combination of the muse and the inner beloved. So the, the West uh, facet of our wholeness is deeply imaginative, is um, creative. Uh, it's the part of us that, um, uh, that finds solutions uh, and understandings about the world that come from the depths, not from the everyday strategic mind. And uh, the West loves the darkness, the fruitful darkness, which means the unknown. And so the, the West is, uh, you might say, has a love affair with the world in general, but also in particular with dreams, with the unconscious, with the undoing and decaying of things. Death is of great uh, interest uh, and, and fully embraced by the West. And... Um, the West is the part of us that is uh, most interested in the, the mysteries of the psyche and of soul. So that's very brief, but that um, gives you a sense of the four facets of ourselves. Uh, we're all born with each of those four facets, but it turns out that each one of us is born with an ease to uh, develop or cultivate only one of those facets. And the one on the opposite side of the circle is the one that's hardest for us to cultivate. But to become fully human, in order to embody our uh, fully wild minds, what we need to do is to cultivate all four of the facets and not just rely on the one that's easiest for us. To become fully human is to um, become uh, multifaceted in our fourfold self. Is it easy to cultivate the self? How much time and commitment are we talking here? Um, it's actually not that hard to cultivate the self. One reason it isn't so hard is because we're all born with these capacities. Um, and we, we find uh, these capacities in the stories that are told in traditions all over the world. That they, The sacred stories or the mythologies 
um, the songs, the arts of traditions all around the world reflect these four facets in, uh, in a way that can be referred to as archetypes. So they're in us. They're, they're, we're, we're, every human is born with these capacities, but we don't necessarily have access to them and we don't embody them well or in a mature way unless we uh, learn to cultivate them. So there's one of the four facets is relatively easy for everybody uh, to develop, and which one it is depends on who we are. About 25% of us find the north facet easy and so on. Um, the other three, especially the one opposite our easy to develop facet, um, can be very challenging and they can take some time. But um, even within a week we can start seeing uh, some development and uh, uh, enjoyment in the facets that are less familiar to us. And uh, how long does it take to fully develop them? The answer is very clear. It takes a full lifetime to fully develop all four facets. But even within a week or a month, we can be experiencing um, the uh, fleshing out or the um, uh, development of our, our natural human wholeness if we um, take some time to practice. And the practice can be uh, during our... Um, work time and during our family time, during play time, recreational time, whatever we're doing, we can um, be using that time to cultivate the four facets of our wholeness. And what specific examples might you give for a practice that someone might embark upon? Um, one of the practices introduced in the book which is relevant to all four facets, um, I, I refer to as four direction circles. Four direction circles that, in which we um, go out into a wild or semi-wild place and um, pick a spot or let a spot pick us where we feel at home and centered. And, um, and, and then get to know uh, what we observe and experience in each of the four cardinal directions in that place, and then begin to be in conversation with those places from um, the, the, the four facets of our wholeness. Uh, and in the book there's some explicit uh, templates for how to, how to do that. 